We welcome you all to this afternoon service. We want to thank God for the prelude that we had and the violinists who rendered. Now it's time for us to sing together. As the conductor comes along, let's take our hymn books and rejoice together. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hymn 209 in our green hymn books. <coughs> Yellow hymn books, 150. <laughs> Amen. We want to thank God again for giving us a wonderful afternoon after we had a beautiful morning. Uh, our announcements that we had in the morning still stand about our service lineup for tomorrow. That starting at 9 o'clock, we will have our Sunday school uh, followed by the devotional service at 11 o'clock. Then uh, at 1 o'clock, we are going to have uh, the last service for tomorrow. Uh, God helping us, we want to appreciate all of you 
who have been joining us during these services and wish you the choicest of God's blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the time for God's word. Let us turn to Luke 24, verse 46 to 47. Luke 24, verse 46 and 47. I shall read. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Uh, considering our topic this afternoon, Jesus Christ, the sacrifice for sin, uh, we want to see that it was necessary for Jesus to suffer. We couldn't talk about redemption without Christ suffering for us. 
We couldn't talk about salvation without talking about Jesus suffering for us. So here, after he rose from the dead, he opened their understanding so that they saw the necessity of it. And by God's grace, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will open our understanding Amen. so that we see the necessity of his suffering. Amen. It was necessary for Jesus to suffer so that after that, our redemption will be possible. The preaching of repentance and the preaching of remission of sins only became possible because Jesus Christ suffered. Amen. Today we can rejoice in redemption. Yes. Today we can declare boldly that we are God's children Amen. because Jesus died for us. Amen. Because Jesus Christ suffered in our place. When the Bible says it behoved Christ to suffer, he was suffering in our place. He became our substitute. He became my, my substitute. Amen. He became your substitute. Amen. Jesus Christ suffered in your place. Amen. Jesus Christ died in your place. Amen. And God wants us to realize that we died with him. Yes. As he died, we died with him. Yes. And then when he arose from the dead, we were also resurrected together with him. And when these things become clear in our hearts, when these truths don't own our spirits, that's when we are born again. The moment you realize that indeed he died for you, indeed he died in your place, that realization, when it comes true, when, it, when, when, you, when you experience it, you are flooded with joy. Amen. You are flooded with peace. Amen. You realize you are a new creature. Amen. Hmm? He became our sin bearer. Amen. As he was on that cross, he was carrying your sin. Yes. You know, we always want to think of him as a nice person is a nice savior. But the moment he was on the cross, he wasn't that nice. He was carrying the sin of the whole world. And the father could not look upon him. I want to believe if God had opened your eyes, you couldn't look at him. At that moment, he was bearing witchcraft. At that moment, he was bearing all manner of sickness. You couldn't look at him. And God couldn't look at him. That was a moment of redemption. Now, in the spirit, mysteries, which were not known for generations, were being fulfilled. Amen. Prophecies which were made in generations were being fulfilled at that very hour. Mighty things were happening. And the world could not see it. But as Jesus was on that cross, Mighty things were happening. Mysteries were being fulfilled. Prophecies were being fulfilled. This afternoon, I want every one of us to consider in the depths of our hearts that indeed Jesus took our place. Indeed, Jesus took your place. May God help us. Oh, let us read from Isaiah chapter 53, from verse 4. Isaiah Chapter 53, uh, from verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Amen. These scriptures, for several generations, people were healed as they were reading these scriptures. Yes. People were saved from sin as they were reading these scriptures. Hmm? Surely, surely it's really true. That's what surely means. Hmm? This is the truth. 
Surely, this is the truth. He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Amen. One commentary said, this scripture is talking about the effects of our sins. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't only bear our sins per se. He also had to take upon him the effects of our sins. Mm -hmm. And that effect of our sins was our griefs mm -hmm. and our sorrows. Mm -hmm. But as he was doing it, it didn't dawn on us. We didn't realize what was happening. So the Bible says, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. So these scriptures are highlighting that Jesus, as he was on the cross, he was carrying the sin itself. He was also carrying the effect of our sins. So as we come to him, we must realize the extent of his redemption. If it was a, a chemical, there are these chemicals used by farmers which can destroy uh, the, 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 the effect of a pesticide. It kills the, the pesticide, it kills the effects. It just restores the crop to what it ought to be. When Jesus died for us, what was in God's mind was a full restoration. It was a full restoration. And we need to realize that when it is clear to us that there is a full re redemption, there is a full restoration, we can also go for a full redemption. Amen. And this afternoon I'm saying, since you became a believer, did you realize that there was a full redemption? Did you realize the far-reaching effects of his redemption to you in your life? You can go for the full redemption. You can say, Lord, today I want a full package. Amen. The devil can no longer take something from me. The devil can no longer shortchange me. I want to go for the full redemption. Amen. I want the redemption from my sins. I want the redemption from the effects of sin in my life. Amen. And it is all yours. Fully paid for. Paid by none other than your own Savior. Amen. Oh, do you love him? Do you love Jesus? Are you excited to hear about him? Are you excited to hear about redemption? Oh, may God help us. Amen. You know, even you are the last sinner. You are the worst sinner. You can smile as you hear about redemption this afternoon. Amen. Jesus loves you. Amen. We heard about the wonderful story of love. It is wonderful indeed. And you can take that blood and apply it upon your own life. Apply it upon your own sins. Let's go back to our scripture, Isaiah 53. Let's read on from verse 6. We, all we like sheep, have gone astray, and we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamp to the slaughter and as a sheep before a shearer is dumb. So he opened, he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. What we want to realize this afternoon is that everyone is included in this matter. Yes. He carried the sin of the whole world. Amen. Not only the Jews. Mm -hmm. Not only those who were under the covenant. But when Jesus came, he took us all. Amen. And he said, here I am. Mm -hmm. The sacrifices, the other sacrifices, God was not excited. God did not delight in them. So he said, here I am, a boat you have prepared for me. Amen. And then he willingly went as a sheep. Mm. He was quiet. He did not open his mouth. Why? Because he knew that he became the sacrifice for sin. Mm. 
So when John, when John came, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, Amen. which takes away the sin of the world. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. Amen. You remember on that Passover night, they were instructed to take a lamb without blemish. And Jesus is our lamb. Amen. Today we don't go through all the rituals uh, which the Jews had to, to go through. Why? Because our Passover lamb was already prepared for us. Amen. The lamb was slain for us. Amen. Ours today is to enjoy. Amen. And to understand that indeed it was a perfect sacrifice. Amen. Jesus Christ was that lamb. There's nothing you can take from him. He was a lamb without blame. The Bible says after he had done all these things, he went to heaven and went into, into that temple in heaven, into the Holy of Holies with his own blood. Yes. And he did not need to suffer again and again. Because his sacrifice is a perfect sacrifice. Amen. His blood is still working up to this very time. Amen. His blood is still as powerful as it was when the very day he was, he was crucified. He is working. He is working. And this afternoon you can believe him. Now let's, let's read from the book of Peter and consider what the apostle had to say uh, speaking of this blood. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22 to 25. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22 to 25. Who did no sin, neither was girl found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. When he suffered, he threatened not. He was silent. That's what, the, 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 what Isaiah the prophet said. He was silent. He was quiet. He knew that the plans of God are coming to full fruition. He knew that the prophecies are being fulfilled. Verse 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. As he was on that tree, he was carrying our sins. He was carrying your sin. He was carrying my sins. Hmm? Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes he were healed. Amen. There's a wonderful exchange here. Amen. There's a wonderful exchange here. Amen. There's a wonderful exchange. Amen. As he was carrying our sins, Amen. when that moment he was carrying your sin, Amen. God could not see the same sins on you. Amen. He started to see them on Christ now. Amen. He couldn't take you're dead, and you remain a debtor. He took the debt. Yes. He took it upon himself. Amen. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Amen. This is the truth which must be clear in our hearts. Amen. This is the truth which must come to dawn in our minds. Yeah. That Jesus Christ he took our sins. Yes. And the moment he took them, we couldn't have the same sins he was carrying. This is the truth. When, Jesus, when John said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away, mm -hmm. he takes away the sins of the world. Amen. He takes the sins away. Mm -hmm. Other scriptures say he removes. Mm -hmm. He removes. Amen. Sin cannot remain where he, it was. May God help us. Amen. For he were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd, the bishop of your souls. May God help us. 
The truth that we want to realize is that Christ is the perfect sacrifice for sins. And the moment he takes away sins, sin cannot remain. Amen. The moment he takes away sin, he removes it. It is blotted out. Amen. May God help us. Amen. Let's also read from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also once, sorry, for Christ also had once suffered for sins. He suffered once. Once suffered for sins. The just for the unjust. You see, he's also echoing the same exchange here. The just for the unjust. Yes. So when the just took the place of the unjust, the unjust became just. Oh, may God help us. May we all see this truth. Amen. When the just took the place of the unjust, the unjust became just. And divine justice was accomplished. Amen. Hmm? Christ also had once suffered for sins. He did it once. The just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Hallelujah. Amen. That he might bring us to God. Amen. God was reconciling himself to the world yes. in Christ. Amen. As he was crucified, it was a process of reconciliation. Amen. As he was crucified, God was reconciling himself to the world. Amen. The just for the unjust. Yes. So that the unjust becomes just. May God help us. Amen. This is the truth which we must see. Mm. We must embrace this truth. Mm. We must take it. We must believe this truth. Amen. That the, the, the just took the place of the unjust. Yes. There was a day in history. Mm. There was a day in history when the one who did no sin, who knew no sin, became sin. Yes. He carried sin. He carried the effects of sin. So that we may not endure the consequence of sin. Yes. So that we may not be punished. He became our substitute. Amen. Amen. The moment he became our substitute, God saw in us righteousness for the first time. The moment he took away sin, God could not count the same sin on us. The devil could not accuse us before God. The devil could not go once again before the throne and say these people are sin because there's someone else who speaks better things. Amen. There's a blood which speaks better things. Amen. Once we go to Christ, once we believe him, we cannot be guilty for sin. We can't feel guilty anymore. He takes away sin. He takes away the guilty. The guilty sinners can no longer remain guilty. The guilty mothers cannot remain guilty. The guilty fathers can no longer remain guilty. He takes away guilty. Amen. If you are listening today and you are guilty, I want to tell you that there's good news. Amen. There's good news. Oh, may God help us. Amen. There's good news. You know, there's a scripture which I love. In the book of Acts, uh, let's read it. Acts chapter 13, verse 32. Acts 13, verse 32. Oh, do you know the reason why this gospel is called the good news? Amen. Do you know why it is good news? Amen. It is good news because people who were meet, who were supposed to go through punishment, mm. they can't go through punishment mm. because... Before they get to punishment, there will be someone who will be saying, but I died for them. Mm -hmm. And his blood will be speaking. Mm -hmm. he, he, he effectively canceled the punishment which we were supposed to go through. Yeah. Yeah. You see, you have to see it either way. If God's blood is effective, then the punishment is fully canceled. So it's either there's punishment and, and the blood is ineffective. Or the blood is effective and there's no more punishment. There's no more guilt. The devil might want to come and remind you. The devil might want to come and say something to you. 
The devil might want to come and confuse you, but you have to tell him, whenever he comes, you said, how about the blood? When the devil comes and brings another argument, you tell him, I'm not a lawyer. There's a lawyer, Jesus Christ. He's our advocate with the Father. The Bible says we have got an advocate with the Father. I like it when you go to court and you have got a lawyer. You just keep quiet. You sit there and your lawyer will speak on, our, on your behalf. The Bible says there's someone who speaks on our behalf. There's someone who speaks on my behalf. I'm glad there's someone who speaks on my, on my behalf. And that is Jesus. This Easter, we have got good news for you. There's someone who speaks on your behalf. Amen. Don't worry about trying to explain things to God. Don't try about trying to answer back to the devil. There's someone who speaks on your behalf. Amen. And his, his blood speaks better things. Amen. His blood speaks better things. Amen. The Bible says we have got a better covenant. Yes. And that covenant is upon better promises. Amen. Acts 13, verse 32. Acts 13, verse 32. Uh, I shall read from verse 32. We declare unto you glad tidings, Amen. how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again. Amen. As it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, Amen. this day I have begotten thee. Amen. We declare unto you good news. Amen. We declare unto you glad tidings. Amen. You know the best thing to do when someone is declaring unto you glad tidings mm -hmm. is to gladly receive the word. Amen. The Bible says, them that gladly received the word were baptized. Amen. When the glad tidings come Amen. your way, what you need to do is to receive it, what? Gladly. Hmm? When the glad tidings come, when the glad tidings have been proclaimed, receive the glad tidings with all your heart, Amen. gladly. Hmm? Oh, let's read now. Uh, verse 37. But he, he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Amen. Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, Amen. that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Amen. This afternoon we are declaring and proclaiming the forgiveness of sins. Amen. That Jesus is no longer holding against you those sins. Jesus is talking about redemption. In him we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Redemption is, you know, redemption is fulfilled when there is forgiveness of sins. Hmm? Verse 38, be it known unto you therefore men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. You know, this is good news. God is saying, I'm forgiving your sins. I'm canceling your debts. Verse 39. By him all that believe are justified from all things. By him all that believes are justified from all things. By him, who thank you, God. By him, all that believe. You know what you can do? You can take advantage of the scripture. When it's saying all that believe, you can include yourself. Amen. You can't persist in unbelief. Mm -hmm. You can't persist in unbelief. No. You can't persist in rejecting God. Mm -hmm. You can't persist in rejecting salvation. Mm -hmm. Because all that believe are justified from all things. Can you see the double emphasis? Yeah. All that believe are justified from all things. Hmm? All that believe are justified from all things. You can take advantage of this, this scripture. Hmm? 
from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Oh, if you are clinging to Moses this afternoon, I want you to realize that there's a man who is better than Moses. Amen. If you are holding to the Ten Commandments, Amen. if you are holding to the laws of Moses, the Bible is saying there's a man who justifies you from the things which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Amen. And this is Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says the law came by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. You can embrace grace this afternoon. You can take the truth this afternoon. And the truth came by Jesus Christ. Oh, you need to make a decision this afternoon. You need to believe the truth. You need to open your heart. And to realize that Jesus was hanging there on the, on the cross in your place. When he was taken from the cross and he was buried, the Bible says we were buried together with him. Amen. And when he rose again, victorious over sin, victorious over sickness, victorious over every work of the devil, we rose up together with him. Amen. Amen. May God help us. Amen. Let's also read um, from Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Verse 8 to 11. Romans chapter 10. Verse 8 to 11. Romans chapter 10. Verse 8 to 11. Now we want to say, someone is saying, okay, I've heard the message, so what must I do? What should I do right now? You know, I've come across many people several times asking, I've heard the message. I've heard that Jesus died for me. I want to accept. I've accepted this message. What must I do right now? Tell me what to do. During the time of Peter, the Bible says them that heard Peter preach, preach they were pricked in their hearts. And they said, what shall we do? You know, during the time of Paul, when he, had, he was preaching with Barnabas, and they were put uh, at Philip, they were jailed. And then the jail said, what shall we do? Says, what must I do? People always ask this question, what must I do? The answer is in the Bible. Amen. You see, it's like a man is at a pool of water, he's very dead. He's at a pool of water and there's soap. You need now in your mind to understand that process which you take to get into the water and to apply the water on yourself. You are take the soap, you apply it on yourself. And you see all the dirt going away. So if you are like this, if this is your question, what must I do? The question, the, the answer is apply the blood of Jesus on you. Apply the blood of Jesus on your sin. Apply the blood of Jesus on your sickness. Use the blood of Jesus to better your situation. Whatever your situation, there's a blood which speaks better things. There's a blood which is so powerful. Use it to your advantage. This is the moment to take the blood of Jesus and apply it on your heart. This is the moment to take the blood of Jesus and apply it on your sin. And you need to see all your doubts going away. You need to see everything that has hindered your life going away. It's time to take all your doubts away. Let's read Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith we preach. Amen. Oh, you might be realizing for the first time that the word is near you, even in your mouth, in your heart. Oh, may God help us. Amen. I love to repeat that this word is in my mouth and in my heart. So it's not a difficult thing. It's not a difficult process. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that is to confess him that he is now your Lord, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We need to realize that our salvation was made possible by Jesus dying 
in our place and rising again from the dead. And when you believe that he indeed rose from the dead and you confess that with your mouth, you will be saved. A wonderful miracle will happen in your life. A wonderful transformation will happen in your life. If it was a trouble, if it was a problem, you see it disappear. May God help us. Hmm? For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. So as I am preaching this afternoon, you believe with your heart. And when you believe, you believe that indeed he took away. So you can't remain with that sin. You receive this word and you don't see yourself any sinner anymore. Amen. You look yourself for the first time and you realize that Jesus died for your sins. Amen. You accept his redemption. Amen. You accept it with your heart. Amen. Them that received him, who believed in his name, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Amen. You believe that for the first time. When you believe, you cannot be a sinner anymore. Mm -hmm. The Bible is saying with the heart, verse 10, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. Righteousness means a right standing with God. Yes. It means God sees him a right man. Mm -hmm. The just for the unjust. Mm -hmm. That is the moment when the unjust becomes just. Because the just man has taken the place of him who, who could not stand before God. For the first time, he can come before God. Now the Bible is saying, And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So what you are believing with your heart, you must now declare with your own mouth. What you are believing with your heart, you must now declare with your own mouth. Amen. If you believe that indeed he died in your place, you need to declare it. You need to say, I now see it. Amen. He died for me. I, I'm no longer a sinner. Amen. When you do that, oh, a wonderful change takes Amen. place. Joy floods your soul. You need to realize before you believe Jesus, you are a sinner. You are supposed to face God's judgment. But because someone died in your place, God won't be just. It is unjust for God to send you to hell when you believe. God cannot continue to see you as an unbeliever the moment you receive Jesus, the moment you believe in his redemption. There's another scripture which is also wonderful, and it's in 2 Corinthians. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 5, verse, uh, verse 19 and verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 Corinthians chapter chapter 5 verse 19 to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them so do you see the trick here you may still be imputing sin on yourself but God is not doing that God is, is not, because the Bible is saying, to wit God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their tras trespasses unto them, not counting their trespasses unto them. So in Christ, God could not continue to hold the world for their sins. He can't. So to wit God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That's why we are now declaring it. He hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And we are now proclaiming it. We are saying God has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And what, what are we saying? We are saying take the, the opportunity, use this opportunity, be ye reconciled to God. Be ye reconciled through Jesus. The window of reconciliation is open. The door of opportunity is open. Verse 21. For he hath made him to be seen. For, for means because, isn't it? Because he hath made him to be seen. For us. For us. For me. He made him to be seen for you. He made him to be seen for us. 
Who knew no sin? We read Peter said he was a just man who died for the unjust. So he made him to be seen for us in our place. Amen. Who knew no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God Amen. in him. Amen. God realizes that there was a man who knew no sin. And he made him to be seen for us. And he is now not counting our sins. He is not imputing our sins against us. But it is on condition that we believe Jesus. It is on condition that we ask, accept his redemption. It is on condition that we accept the payment which God made in our place. Amen. This is an opportunity to get saved. Amen. If you miss this opportunity and you die in your sin, you will go to hell. Mm -hmm. And after a million years in hell, you will still be there. There is no other payment for sin acceptable before God other than the blood of Jesus. Amen. There is no other acceptable redemption other than the redemption of Christ. Amen. So don't try to look for another redemption. Don't try to look for another payment. You won't be able, even after spending billions of years in hell, you will still be there. And, you, and the payment won't be enough. You can take advantage. As we now go to pray, you can also open your heart. And you accept from the depth of your heart the redemption which Jesus paid for you. May God bless you. Six nine five green hymn books. One four one in our yellow hymn books. Have you any room for Jesus? E panjimbo kuna Jesu watakura jivi ano kumbira kopenda. Ga api de ponisi I panji boku na Jesu Tere raiz wirake Uzarure boyo wako Vu makuti api de Let us pray. Our dear Father, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise. Because you are worthy to be praised. You gave us Jesus to die for us, to die in our stead, that we may receive redemption, forgiveness of sins. Thank you for the word, oh my God. Father, we want to take this advantage, full advantage, oh Lord, because this is the opportunity that you've given us, Father, to seek your face. The world over is seeking you now. They know you are there. Thank you for this uh, Good Friday Amen. that you gave us. He died for us. Amen. He left uh, He left nothing undone, Amen. which was supposed to be done. Amen. Father, as we kneel down now, as we seek you in prayer, Amen. meet these seeking hearts. Amen. Forgive them, oh my God. Amen. Make them believers Amen. that they believe you and they, be ju and they become justified. Amen. They will be your sons, oh my God. They will be made your children. Oh, my God, because that, that, that is what your word said. We thank you, Lord, for this Passover. A Passover with a difference. 
a Passover that, that, that you have invited us. Here we are, oh Lord. See you the hearts of everyone, wherever they may be. Those that are sincere want to hear them testifying salvation. That in the, in the comfort of my house, I heard the truth. And God saved me. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.